It's a beautiful day in this neighborhood. A beautiful day for a neighbor. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? The opening theme to Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood is perhaps one of the most iconic opening themes of all time. It's something that many of us grew up with. And something about it feels familiar and happy and even sentimental. And I actually think that there's a good reason for this that can be explained with some simple harmony and music theory. Now we've talked about Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood in the past, and we've also talked about how Johnny Costa, who was a brilliant, brilliant pianist, who was responsible for pretty much all of the music on the show, but many people aren't as aware of Fred Rogers' own proficiency as a musician and as a pianist. <laughs> In fact, most of the music, its actual composition, was done by Mr. Rogers himself. And that includes the opening theme. Hey, check out the link in the description below because we're now running our holiday sale through Christmas. You can get a massive deal on our courses. No matter what you wanna learn, we have a deal set up just for you. With everything from 50% off, 60% off, even 70% off our normal pricing. But we'll talk more about that in just a little bit. Let's check this out. So even right there in the beginning, the very first thing we hear, the Celeste. It's that classic opening that we all recognize. And there's immediately some things that I think help to illustrate what it is about this theme that is so iconic and memorable. If we take a look at the harmony, it's pretty much a normal one, six, two, five thing. When you break it down, that's really all it is, but this seems to have just a little something extra that makes it iconic and makes it so memorable. And I think that that can be related to just a couple of things. First of all, that's a beautiful opening. I mean, it sits just on this G sus chord. When we lock this position, this four note position, and we just move it, stacked thirds all the way up with our hand just locked like that. We start on the fifth as our top note. Okay, and that'll put us out on the third where we want to end up when we go like this. Now notice where we land. We started here, that's our sus chord, and we end here. That's also our sus chord, but look at everything that happens in between. You could do this at home, this is very, very easy to do. Start with your top note on G, build it down, and just go right up until you land on that chord up there. Looks like an F major seven. But when you put the G in the bass, that's where we get that sus voicing from. So we have this beautiful opening. Once we finally resolve that sus to the dominant, that opens up our entry point for the melody. Now, just that melody alone right there is such a beautiful usage of the chord tones and creating some upper extensions with our chord changes just by the nature of what notes the melody falls on, right? So we have, now in this case, we're, we're really just looking at that F sharp kind of as a passing tone. It's just sort of like a, we're just playing around with this, with this fifth that we're sitting on. This is where things get interesting because we have a six chord, which is gonna be dominant in this case, but our notes are gonna go, this is the one, obviously. There's our seventh, but this note, kind of creates the whole chord and really tells us what it is. This is in the in the chord of A dominant. 
this is the flat 13. So already we know because of what the melody is that this chord is going to be an A7 flat 13 chord. Hey, if you want to download the chart, it's completely for free. There's a link down in the description. All you got to do is go to that link and we will send that chart straight to your inbox in case you want to take the chords and the melody and play around with it yourself and try out some of these different voicings and things that we've been talking about. Now this is a really interesting spot. And this is where I think the Mr. Rogers opening really gets a lot of its sentimentality to it. They almost want to cry when you're listening to it. And part of the reason for that is, say it with me, the minor four chord. Check this out. Now normally, if we were to do a simple chord progression like this, one, six, two, five, one. Very common chord progression, especially in jazz, right? And so we're kind of doing that. But instead of using the five right here, we're gonna use something else. And I say something else because I've listened to a lot of different versions of this opening, and this is one of the things that makes Johnny Costa so great. It was never really the same way every single time. I mean, he yes, he did a lot of flourishes and all kinds of improvised lines over top, but even the harmony itself wasn't always exactly the same every single time. Now I say that, but here's the cool thing. It kind of was the same. Even if he played it differently in a bunch of different ways, we're gonna look at why different applications of this exact piece of the harmony wind up kind of being the same thing, even, the, even if they sound a little bit different. I'm calling this the minor four chord. But here's the cool thing about something like this. We have our melody notes, which are G, F, and E. And we know we have that A flat in there. Now let's think about all the ways that we can construct a chord around this. Well, so far we know we've had F minor. The E becomes the minor major seven, right? Like that. What if we put a D on the bottom? Now it's a D half diminished, or a D minor seven flat five. There's a lot of instances in which you can hear Johnny Costa and the trio playing this, and they seem to kind of brush on a number of different things. So we have like... They, sometimes they'll make two chords out of that one measure. Walking down from G, F to E, right? And then our turnaround, which is A, two, five, one. And so that's what that first part looks like. This is what's so cool about this opening theme because we just went which maybe it's five, four, three, I don't know. Maybe it's just on that minor four. But here, we are now have a different option, right? Because we could just do our regular turnaround. That would work perfectly fine. That's technically correct, right? But what else can we do here? How about a tritone substitution? Once again, a tritone sub. The chord that we were originally gonna use was A. We were gonna go E, a, D, G, C. Once again, E minor seven, A seven, D minor seven, G dominant, G seven, to our one chord. If we take any one of those chords, we can trade that chord's tritone. tone. So we're gonna take A, and we're gonna skip, we're not gonna play A. Instead, we're gonna make a tritone from that, which is E flat, right? We're gonna make it an E flat dominant chord. A D, and we can even do it again right here. Instead of our five, we can take that tritone, which happens to be D flat, and play that. So it could sound like this. That works just as well as. In fact, it almost doesn't even sound any different. And that's because when we use a tritone substitution, the actual functionality of the chord doesn't really change all that much. Because if I take whatever I play in my right hand over A, let's say I'm playing like a sharp nine flat 13 voicing of A7, okay? Well, let me just trade out the A for the E flat. Look what we get now. We get an E flat dominant with a, uh, sharp 11 and the 9th in there and the 13th 
It's the same exact structure. This exact same structure works with an A in the bottom or an E flat in the bottom. This is one of the reasons why tritone subs are so effective and they sound so cool because it's a good way to trade out some baseline motion without actually changing the functionality of the harmony. So we hear Johnny Costa do this a lot throughout the soundtrack of the Mr. Rogers Show. It's a beautiful day in this neighborhood, a beautiful day. Something as simple as that, in between. Right? It's just a little counter melody that adds some connecting motion to make the harmony flow into the next part. If we're a neighbor, would you be mine? Woo! Something like that, wow. Could a beautiful day for a neighbor, would you be mine? Could you be mine? It's a neighbor. But the point is, is that Johnny Costa is just doing incredible work floating in and around the overall melody, which once again, when you write a melody that for the most part is this diatonic and harmonically vague, and I say that sounds bad, but what I mean is like this line right here. Think about all the different ways that that can be harmonized. It's endless, right? And that's because we're kind of just using the major scale. And so when you're using the major scale, it really leaves a lot open for interpretation and variation, which is exactly the freedom that Fred Rogers gave to Johnny Costa. And that is why every time an episode of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood opens, you heard something just a little bit different. Just wanted to have a neighbor just. This is one of my favorite parts about this whole thing. So we have a typical, uh, it, it ends. And then we get a very classic motion of just turning the one chord dominant, which now tells us, okay, we're gonna go now, usually to a four chord, because that's where this, this is pulling us there, right? So when we make this dominant, we're turning it into its own five chord, which is gonna lead us to F major. And this is where it gets really cool. to have a neighbor just like you. Woo! If I were just to hear this and not dig any deeper, I would expect it to go like this. Something like that. So we'd have a four and then a dominant A. Now we have a two five going back to C. And then you don't have to go to C, you could you go to A, kind of the same thing. And then uh, develop however that however you want to there. But if we listen closer, we actually hear what's going on, which is way cooler. Because we do go to that four chord, but instead we walk it down. We get that A dominant, but it's over its five. Over the the E, right? So and that brings us right down to the D minor, but then it's not a two five. It's not two five. It's not that. It goes two to A flat. And I think it's like an A flat six chord, right? Like that. And why that's so interesting is not only does it throw your ear for a loop and you're like, oh, that's kind of cool. It's just a little bit of a different sound. Even though if we look at what this chord has in it, we could literally change one note and it becomes a variation, uh, some type of uh, G7 chord. In this case, it'd be like a flat nine, flat 13, right? But we can let it sit right there on the A flat. And here's why that's cool, because let's listen to where it goes from there. So we have walking down, D minor, A flat. Look at that. We go to our one chord, but it's over the five. So that is that thing we've been talking about on the channel where it's like, it kind of feels settled, but not really. It still very clearly has yet to fully resolve. Even though it's the one chord, the one chord is home bass, but when we put the five underneath it, it doesn't really sound like home bass. It sounds a little more complicated than that. It sounds a little bit more up in the air than that, right? So we have our one chord and then we continue going. I've always wanted to live in a neighborhood with you. Yes, check that out. Here we're kind of getting back into sus land, the way we started the tune, right? So we have one, 
and then like a G7 sus, or you could look at it like an F over G type of sound. But then we get a chromatic 2-5. This is one of my favorite devices, and it works just like this. We have a 2-5, right? 2-5. But then a chromatic 2-5, a half step down. Let's look at that whole bridge together because this is really, really great harmonic writing. And then it leads perfectly right back into the melody. It's such a simple ending. Won't you please, please won't you be my neighbor. Please won't you be my neighbor. It's so perfect. This is the tag, right? Whatever the melody is there. And then... How do you get any simpler, yet any more effective? Than that. Absolutely beautiful songwriting. You could just listen to episodes of Mr. Rogers and analyze the playing going on behind it. And if you want to dig even deeper into playing this instrument and music theory as well, be sure to take advantage of our holiday sale only until Christmas. We have massive deals going on on everything we offer on the Cornell Music Academy. You can get any one course for 50% off, or we have a couple of bundles curated with some different pathways that are recommended for learning certain things. We have our ultimate intro bundle, and we have our improv essentials bundle if you're a little bit more Advanced. Both of those bundles are 99 bucks. That's a massive discount. And you know what? If you want to get everything available on the Academy, we are offering it as one big package of six courses, which is what we currently have available for 70% off. It is an insane deal and we wanted to do something big for the holidays. So use the link down in the description below and be sure to check out all of the deals this month. Man, I could spend literally all day just talking about different tunes from the Mr. Rogers universe. If you'd like to see me break down any other of the works from Mr. Mr. Rogers Neighborhood, then just let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you in the next video.